English writing skills, punctuation marks. Lesson one. To some of you, learning punctuation rules in English may sound as appealing as eating this plate of broccoli. But broccoli is good for you, isn't it? Just as eating broccoli and other green vegetables can give you a stronger body, knowing punctuation rules can give you stronger communication skills. I guess my job is to figure out how to serve the broccoli in such a way that you'll want to eat it. Doesn't this look much more appealing? This is pasta, roasted chicken, and broccoli in a garlic butter sauce. That's my goal in this series. I'm not just going to give you punctuation rule after punctuation rule. In fact, I'm not going to say that they're always strict rules. I'm going to show you patterns that are standard for punctuation in English. And I'm going to present these patterns in context, in a meaningful context so that everything is clear and so that our lessons are still enjoyable. We'll always begin with a model. I'll show you a few ways to use punctuation marks in our model, and then it will be your turn. In each lesson, I'll give you sentences for you to punctuate. If you're ready, let's begin. Lesson one topics. In this lesson, we'll talk about sentence punctuation. We'll look at how we use a capital letter, a period, a question mark, and an exclamation point in a sentence. We'll also review what a contraction is and how we use an apostrophe to form a contraction. Model. What magical power would you like to have? I've thought of a few. Do you want to know my answer? Guess. Now how many complete thoughts did you just hear? Count them. What magical power would you like to have? I've thought of a few. Do you want to know my answer? Guess. There are four complete thoughts, so we have four sentences. In English, a sentence begins with a capital letter. That's an uppercase letter. So we'll change this to capital W. There we need a capital I. Here we need capital D. And finally, A capital G. Now as we write sentences, we're either making a statement or asking a question. If we're asking a question, we must end with a question mark. That's called an interrogative sentence. So we have two questions. Here and here. If you're simply making a statement, the sentence ends with a period. That's called a declarative sentence. Now, if you're giving a command, and it's an urgent command, a strong command, you can end with an exclamation point. We use exclamation points to express strong emotions or some kind of urgent message. Guess, okay? Punctuation makes the purpose of each sentence clear. There's one more punctuation mark I need to add here. Do you see where? Right there. That's a contraction, a short form. To mark the letters that are missing, we use an apostrophe, okay? So contractions are short forms. Contractions use apostrophes. Now it's your turn. I'm going to give you sentences for you to punctuate. Remember to start your sentences with a capital letter. Decide what final punctuation mark is needed. A question mark for a question, 
a period for a statement. You may also need an exclamation point for an urgent command or to make a statement with strong emotion. If you see contractions, remember an apostrophe will be needed. Now, do you want to know one of my answers? One of the many magical powers I'd love to have is to be able to whip up a wonderful meal with a snap of my fingers. Practice. Punctuate the sentences. Let's try number one together. Look at the words. We have one complete thought, so let's begin our sentence with a capital letter. Now, are we asking a question or making a statement? If you look at the grammar, you see it's a question. What do we need? A question mark. Is magic real? Let's go on. 2. How many complete thoughts do you see here? There are two. Let's start each with a capital letter. The first is a statement and the second is a question. Some believe anything is possible. Do you? Three. Again, ask yourself how many complete thoughts are there? There are two. We'll start each with a capital letter. And I hope you see that the first is a statement and the second is a question. We also have a contraction. So what do we need? An apostrophe. Science can't explain everything. Would you agree? Four. How many complete thoughts did you see? Hopefully two. Each will start with a capital letter. The first is a question. We'll need a question mark. And the last word, wow, expresses strong emotion. What punctuation mark should we use then? An exclamation point. Can you imagine being able to learn any foreign language in a week? Wow! Five. Hopefully you recognize the use of the imperative. Here we have an instruction, a direction, and then a request or invitation. Find a study partner and talk about a magical power you'd like to possess. So it starts with a capital letter and ends with a period. Have fun! Start with a capital letter and end with an exclamation point. We also have a contraction, the short form of you would, you'd, so we need an apostrophe. Six. Here we have a single statement. We begin with a capital letter and that first word is a contraction, a short form for I will. So let's use an apostrophe. Now you have a choice at the end. We can use one of two punctuation marks. We can use a period or an exclamation point. The choice gives you control of the tone of this whole sentence. That's why punctuation marks can be so important. If we use a period, it's a neutral sentence, like this. I'll see you soon for another lesson on punctuation marks. With an exclamation point, we're making a statement with stronger emotion. It could read like this. I'll see you soon for another lesson on punctuation marks. There's a difference, isn't there?
That's the end of our first lesson on punctuation marks. Remember to start your sentences with a capital letter. Remember to end sentences with a period or a question mark. Remember to use exclamation points for urgent commands or statements with strong emotion. And don't forget that contractions need an apostrophe. Thanks for watching and happy studies. Please visit my website today at www.englishwithjennifer.com. You'll find study tips, interactive exercises, vocabulary videos, and more.